Bom dia, companheiros e companheiras of the Perseu Abramo Foundation. So I want to invite to the panel the president of the Perseu Abramo Foundation, our comrade Márcio Poshman. Also, to join us for the opening panel, the national president of the Workers' Party, Senator Glazy Hoffman. This conference is an initiative of the Perseu Abramo Foundation and relies on the support of the International Relations Department of the Workers' Party and of the International Committee in Solidarity with Lula and in Defense of Democracy in Brazil, created eight months ago. Since the arrest of our President Lula, the conference aims after the long year of 2018, which did not actually begin in 2018, our trajectory, this new historical moment we're experiencing in Brazil, but aims to, at the end of this year, the, of the last two years of lots of struggle, many confrontations, much resistance of an election campaign. We aim, therefore, to reflect upon the political moment we are experiencing here in Brazil in terms of the defense of democracy. And we know that this moment we're experiencing here in Brazil is not uh, the features of this moment do not uh, relate only to Brazil, only to our country. They, it has to do with a lot of goings on around the world, the advance of the far right, but also coups against progressive governments, progressive governments, uh, people-oriented governments in Latin America and the Caribbean, and it's up to us. Uh, parties, militants, movements, progressives of the left in general in Brazil and globally to reflect upon uh, the challenges that are put before us, to reflect in depth. We who have always been the fighters for democracy, the defenders of democracy uh, all over the world, and so we have chosen this date, the 10th of December, because today is the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It is an emblematic date for humankind. It is a date that is emblematic for us all who defend democracy, stand up for democracy, solidarity, a fairer and more egalitarian world for all. So it may seem a joke. That 70 years on, we should come together in this room within the context of the Brazil, Latin America, and the world is facing, recovering, uh, re uh, bringing back to the surface, let's say, these values, these ideals about democracy. So I want to close this uh, uh, opening session um, by quoting uh, Guimarães Rosa, Brazilian writer and poet, and he is from President Dilma's state, Minas Gerais, and he was a, is a former diplomat, since we are in an internationalist setting here. Anyway, this poem by Guimarães Rosa, this excerpt from this poem, says a lot about our tasks ahead and our animus. So the course of life shuffles everything up. Life is like that. Warms up, cools down, tightens, then loosens up. Quietens, then disquietens. What it wants from us is courage. Thank you all. So our conference is open. International Conference in Defense of Democracy is therefore open. So now I hand over 
to the president of the Perseo Abramo Foundation, Márcio Poshman. This is the organization that promotes this wonderful event. So we thank in advance uh, the foundation for its hard work in making uh, this conference come together. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Monica. Our fraternal greetings, greetings in solidarity to all of those who are in the room here in Sao Paulo, as well as uh, over the internet. So I want to greet all the delegations. A special thank you for our speakers who accepted the invitation to be a part of this collective uh, reflection here today and also congratulate the efforts of all the staff of the Perseo Abramo Foundation to make sure that this conference, uh, such an important event, could take place. It is an important event, not just for the Workers' Party, but for the whole progressive camp, uh, political forces that have before them a complex setting that demands uh, reflection with, with great humility, but also in depth. Nothing is more important, therefore, than this possibility to come together here for us all, and scholars and experts, but also political cadres, parliamentarians in general, at the close of this year, uh, with this concern, with this uh, intent to understand better the trajectory we are involved in, and a description that could be a conservative it could be it could be conservative to just identify issues and not point ways forward so our foundation is connected to a party so we don't win. it's not an academic seminar about identifying or understanding the current setting national and internationally but more than that we have to talk about possibilities about routes ahead so that's the um, reason for our being here. So thank you, President Glazy of the Workers' Party came out stronger from the electoral process in spite of all the difficulties that we uh, face. I like very much uh, a book, a recent publication by Wolfgang Streck that talks a little bit about the trajectory of capitalism at the turn of the 20th to the 21st century. He, it is called Bought Time. That's the capacity of capitalism to delay its crisis, to put off its crisis. And it seems that what is happening, what, what happened in 2008 brought to the surface uh, barriers that mean that it is harder to delay, to postpone problems and contradictions that the capitalist system um, offers us. And uh, another publication Christian, by Christian Laval that shows how the 2008 crisis was establishing, uh, gradually established the basis for another neoliberalism, a neoliberalism that accepts more and more the presence of neo-fascist forces and gradually compromises the basis of democracy. We are all Democrats here in this room. We are all involved and we are all advocates for transformations of society. We must have the clarity about this stage that apparently is uh, setting in where part of society in different parts of the world calls for anti-systemic solutions, but what comes after these anti-systemic proposals, unfortunately, have been regressions. So this perspective of change of society, we're talking about parties, organizations that in one way or another belong to society, urban industrial society, that was constituted since the turn of the 18th to the 19th century, and now shows signs, displays signs of a different kind of social players, of a dominant economic sector, which is the service sector, with implications for our institutions. So with great humility within this fraternal uh, political camp, as is normal in our events, so we want to come away better 
uh, tomorrow from uh, how we arrived this morning. So, with these words, I want to say a special heartfelt thanks to all of those that helped build this important moment for us all, because it is precisely in these moments of difficulty that we build better paths ahead for our future. So thank you very much. A special greeting. Let's all have a great couple of days of debates. Thank you. Well said, Matthew. Thank you very much. Uh, profound, but brief. Now I hand over to our president of the Workers' Party, Senator Glazy Hoffman. So I'm going to use Matthew's time uh, left over, OK? Good morning, everyone. I want to say a special greeting to our uh, visitors from uh, brother, sister organizations from abroad. Thank you very much. Those that are here to speak, a special thank you to you too. A special greeting also to the leadership of the foundation, Perseu Abramo Foundation, through our president, uh, Márcio Poshman. Uh, and our International Relations Secretary, Monica Valenti, the brothers and sisters from the Lula Livre Committee, the Free Lula Committee, a special good morning to us all. But let us say a special good morning all together to... That's a special good morning for President Lula. We do this every morning in the encampment outside. Uh, the federal police uh, holding cell. We do this every morning, every afternoon, and every evening to remind him that we are with him. So I want also to congratulate the coordination of this um, event with the rally that we're going to have this evening at the Metal Workers Union of the ABC uh, Union Hall. Uh, to call for Lula's release. Everybody knows of the coup we faced and the lawfare that President Lula has been submitted to. So he was prevented from standing for president. So unfortunately, we had the election of President Bolsonaro. Our comrade Fernando Haddad made a huge effort in the election campaign. It was a beautiful campaign, but a tough one because we were fighting against a factory of fake news and an extremely violent uh, actions through WhatsApp, inspired and coordinated by Steve Bannon, the man, Pres President Donald Trump's man at arms, let's say. Bolsonaro was elected. I know many of people here in this room, and I have talked to people from abroad, and everybody is flabbergasted with Bojai Bolsonaro's positions. He has made uh, numerous uh, statements of complete disdain for democracy. He went as far as saying that the military dictatorship killed too few people, should have killed 30,000 to rid Brazil of the communists. He is openly in favor of tortures and torturers, and yesterday they had the right-wing summit meeting in Foz do Iguaçu in Paraná, uh, bringing together people from around the world to discuss an offensive against the left. They have a very aggressive discourse that the left must die. And here, a very strong offensive against the Workers' Party where that has been chosen as the public enemy number one. So over the course of his career, this man has always attacked indigenous peoples, women. We have our Congress uh, woman, Maria do Rosario, who can tell you very well about what he did in Congress. Black people, LGBTs, and has always used offensive language in the Trump style, and Trump is his idol, and completely disdainful of environmental um, questions, and canceled uh, preparatory conference COP25 in Brazil. His environment minister that has just been uh, appointed has been chosen is also an aberration. He follows the standard of all his other ministers. He said that global warming is silly, that we have to attack the landless uh, workers' movement, the MST. That has been the mantra of the elect, of the president-elect and his ministers, to attack the social movements. And he chooses the, the MST and the MTST, which is the 
urban uh, homeless people's movement. And this is generating a level of violence in Brazil that is great. I was in Paraíba in the northeast of Brazil just yesterday at the wake of two uh, leaders of the MST in Paraíba who were executed simply uh, hooded um, murderers entered the encampment, identified the two leaders, and unloaded their guns. So people are worried about this because the incentive of Bolsonaro to violence is opening the, the, the floodgates, so to speak, for people to do what they want, what they think they have to do. And so they think that they won't be sanctioned. And it is quite possible that they won't. So Paraíba is a state governed by a progressive government. Ricardo Coutinho has already uh, put the police to investigate. I hope we have results. I, uh, I'm confident we'll have results, but we know that the judiciary, we will have perhaps very little agility in this regard. This regression we are experiencing in Brazil, it's not only ours, we're witnessing it in other parts of the world. In Latin America, it's very much uh, uh, present. It's very much taking place. So a movement to implement a more orthodox uh, form of neoliberalism. We see it in Argentina, in Ecuador, in Peru, Paraguay, Chile, um, the persecution against Venezuela. So it is a global movement. Also, there is a, a hybrid war uh, going on in the continent against pol the progressive governments. And one of the weapons is called lawfare, and we're witnessing that very well with President Lula. He is the example of that. Lula was arrested without evidence, with a highly politicized judiciary. And this is um, borne out by the appointment of the federal judge that found uh, Lula guilty has now been appointed Minister of Justice. We know the, 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 the post of minister is not a technical post, it's a political appointment, and he accepted the, the appointment, and he even says that he uh, remains uh, technical. And so with Lula, everything was allowed. There were orders given on the phone. There were uh, distortions. There was uh, illegal recordings of phone conversations. As the Italian jurist Luigi Ferragioli said, so the criminal law of the enemy is used against Lula. That is the rule that has been applied against Lula. And these suits are conducted by a politicized judge, but by a judiciary that is politicized and party politicized at the same time, and also by the prosecution service. So these people take publicly uh, political positions on the social networks and leak to the major, uh, to the mainstream press information that are very selectively leaked about the suits, therefore creating a narrative of incrimination of President Lula and the Workers' Party and others. And so to have a public act, a public activity about uh, demanding Lula's freedom is very important to us. And it's also very important that the liberation of the Human Rights Council of the United Nations during the election campaign. It said clearly that Lula had the right to stand for president. He was being sued and tried, and even under arrest, he had the right. The arrest after the second level of uh, trial, after one, the first appeal court, it, it was legalized by the Supreme Court, not by Congress. It wasn't enacted. So there has to be a, a justification that the person has to pose some kind of risk to society to not uh, be able to appeal in freedom. So the UN Human Rights Council took the view that Lula had the right to stand for president. But we know that Brazilian justice system did not um, accept this recommendation, and Lula was deprived from the, his candidacy. With Manor Moro as the Minister of Justice, we have a state of police. 
European we think this is going to be repressive to whoever opposes to the government and also to social movements. It's going to be something without a truce. And uh, those that are ahead of the uh, Brazilian economy respond to Paulo Guedes, that uh, is known as the School of Chicago, ultra-liberal, and we know what is going to happen in terms of social guarantees. So we are going to have a repressive state and the population submitted to a serious condition in terms of uh, development and social protection. Unemployment is high in Brazil, and we believe it's going to continue so, because what they are proposing to our economy has no uh, means to resume economy. Our role, as uh, said the Workers' Party, is to resist and fight and articulate from now on and organize a democratic front with all segments of society, political parties, social movements, uh, civil society organizations to fight uh, the setbacks and the underdevelopments we are going to have from now on. And we are only going to be successful if we have help from progressive forces throughout the world. This is an international fight. It is not a domestic fight. I understand that only Brazil, but all countries understand that. If we do not organize and strengthen ourselves internationally, having a democratic front that is international, we won't be able to cope with this wave of ultra-right that is spreading uh, in several places. So with this regard, we thank you so much for attending uh, today who came from your countries here to talk about democracy in Brazil and in the world, to talk about the freedom of President Lula that is a symbol for Brazil but also for the whole of Latin America and the world. I believe that you will be able to articulate this front uh, as a major observatory for human rights something we can resort to in situations like what happened yesterday so that internationally everything can be followed and justice can be made. Um, Bolsonaro is not only a threat for Brazil and Latin America, but to the whole of the world together with us, his ultra-right companions. He is a threat to the world based on multilateralism and uh, inclusive uh, development. He's a threats to the BRICS, to Mercosul, everything we were able to build in the short period of time we had as an alternative to the world war order in effect. That's why we need Brazil to be resilient. We want uh, our Brazil back to us, a country that is sovereign, that is committed to peace and multilateralism. And that's why you being here is so important. And that's why Lula free is so important. Let Lula free. Set Lula free. Thank you, uh, Glazy, President Glazy. I think that with the words of Marcio Pashman, that uh, theoretically thought of this new phase of uh, authoritarian uh, neoliberalism and brought the concrete example of uh, Brazil with President Glazy. We are now opening our conference in the defense of democracy. We thank you all. Uh, people who are on the web, please stay with us. And I'm going to call now Arthur Henrique, director of Perseu Abrano Foundation, that is going to chair the first panel. Thank you very much. Sorry, I just would like to tell you that we are 
distributing cards and asking you to write down a message to President Lula. We are going to give it to him and we are organizing it. We have hopes that he will come out after Christmas. We are working very hard, but if that doesn't happen, we are organizing Christmas and New Year with Lula. So if you are in Brazil and you want to attend, you are invited for Christmas dinner and New Year's Eve with Lula.